Okay, welcome to my uh, video here. I'm calling this uh, Why Buy a 380? And uh, hopefully I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, why I bought one and um, some reasons why, or at least logical reasons on why you may consider uh, purchasing a 380. But before I get to that point, I'd like to just do a little bit of history here as far as how I got one. And, uh, and, and then I'll talk about... Uh, uh, the rest of it. Um, what you see here in the in the picture here on on the left here is a full size Glock 22. This is a 40 cal um, full size um, the handgun. I, I purchased this. Uh, and one thing you'll find out about me if you haven't figured it out already is I do like my like finding a deal. And uh, so this was purchased as a former law enforcement uh, trade in or a Leo trade in. And um, I've I've done some updates to it over the years, but uh, this is uh, kind of my what I keep at home. Um, and on this side over here, we have the Glock 27, which is my first concealed carry gun. And normally, when I'm talking about a 380, I'm talking about you know you're talking about purchasing something for a concealed carry purposes, self defense purposes, etc. And this was my first uh, first uh, entrance into that foray. Um, and if you're familiar with the Glock 27, it's essentially a clone of a Glock 26, which is the 9mm version. This is just the 40 cal version. And um, for these guns, you know, basically, my experience with it has been fine. It's been a perfectly fine um, performer. Um, you know, I, I have no, you know, failure to feed, failure to eject, no, no issues with it. It eats any type of ammo. Uh, it, it does really, really well. Um, the issue that I have with it um, is, is in carrying with it is, is it's kind of a, I consider it a little bulky. Basically this um, is, is basically a Glock 22 with some of the barrel chopped off and some of the grip chopped off. Uh, the frame and, and everything else itself, the slide, it all feels full size. Um, and if you look at them side by side here, hopefully I can do justice to this, but um, if you look at these side by side here, um, they are essentially the same width, um, and 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 everything is the same except, like I said, some of the grip is lopped off, and then um, some of the barrel length is is lopped off. So um, when it comes to concealed carrying, um, it's it's fine. It's easier to carry than than the full size 22. But the 27 is, is to me, always has been a little bulky uh, in carrying. Um, and so a few years ago, I started looking around for something else um, to carry. And um, that's when I, I found um, this guy. This is my basically my second concealed carry. And this is a, a uh, SIG P365XL. This is in 9mm, however. Uh, as, as a lot of you are aware... Um, 40 cal used to be the uh, the choice for uh, a lot of the three letter agencies um, out there, and they had government contracts. And then more recently, uh, the nine millimeter uh, has won out, and so they're converting back to nine millimeters. And part of the reason why I liked 40 cal before COVID was because there was so much. Um, police and and law enforcement uh, either trade in or overruns available that buying um, surplus ammo uh, in 40 cal was cheaper than nine millimeter um, it's really not that anymore there isn't as many good great deals anymore and with nine millimeters being taken over by those three letter agencies in their co recent contracts uh, nine millimeter prices have, have come back down and I think in the most part are generally lower than 40 cal so it's generally cheaper to say plink now uh, you know with with FMJs in nine millimeter than uh, it, it is in 40 cal uh, so this was my second purchase and again this I per picked up uh, on a clearance price when our local gander was going out of business um, so I got a deal on this um, and I like it just fine um, except uh, uh, I don't really love the Romeo red dot that I put on here, but that's beyond the point. As far as uh, this itself, uh, it functions okay. I've had some quality issues with, with the SIG. Um, uh, I mean, originally when I purchased it, the, within the first 40 rounds, the front sight just snapped off, and I had to send the frame back in to have it 
replaced and, and I've had some other hiccups with it but um, for the most part it, it's okay the nice thing about this is it's uh, if we look at it against the uh, the Glock when it comes to the Glock 40 cal when it comes to concealed carry it's thinner um, it's so it's it's more of a slimline profile um, it's got a longer barrel um, and so it, it does uh, but the actual uh, f slide itself is is not terribly longer, so it's it's just it's it's a little more comfortable, a little more compact. And one thing I've found is that um, comfort uh, for me has seemed to to win out over the years versus maybe um, capability, uh, and that's not necessarily a great thing, but it's reality in that if I'm not comfortable. Um, I'm probably not going to carry it, and I'd rather carry something than carry nothing at all. So, um, after I got this guy, um, I actually went uh, even smaller, uh, but stayed with 9mm. And I went to this guy uh, and purchased uh, a Ruger LC9S. Um, this is a 7 plus 1 in 9mm. As you can see, it is got a much shorter barrel than even or excuse me a much shorter frame than even the uh sig it does have a, a uh, shorter barrel than the sig so there are some performance concerns when you drop to an even smaller um, sidearm uh, but as far as the side by side comparison again this is even skinnier uh this one is about nine tenths of an inch wide um, it's one of the thinnest, it's just what they call a single stack 9mm, and it's very thin, very easy to conceal, very comfortable to carry. Um, so yeah, that's the, the most recent, um, well, I, I actually subsequently I purchased a, another uh, cheap 9mm, about the same size, the Sky DVG-1, but this was um, uh, the, the, the first in that 3.1 inch barrel uh, 9mm that I got. Um, and then I uh, have picked up, since then, I've picked up the uh, uh, Glock 42 in 380, as well as a even smaller uh, Ruger uh, LCP2, also in 380. Um, now, one of the issues with, with 380 that, that I hear all the time, or that I've, I've seen before, is that, you know, people pick them up because they're, they're small, they're easier to conceal, easier to carry. Well, you know, to debunk that here a little bit, you know, here is again um, the uh, LC9S versus the Glock 42, and uh, essentially the the overall length is pretty much the same as far as the the height. There, the LC9S is a little bit the the grip does extend down a little bit further, but it's actually more narrow than the 380. Um, it's it's about a tenth of an inch narrower than the Glock 42 in 380, and capacity wise, with this extra little bit of grip length, you get a seven plus one in nine millimeter versus six plus one in 380. So that size and weight comparison, because these also weigh almost the same too. So the size and weight comparisons in 380 really don't hold any water. Um, when, when saying that that's better than a nine millimeter or a larger sidearm, unless you're getting to something the uh, LCP2 size or even smaller. Um, and again, then you're really running into the concern about performance and what kind of performance can you get. And I think that's the reason why a lot of my 380 videos are watched is because people carry these small 380s and they're concerned about the performance they're going to get out of them. But if you're going to carry an LCP2 or even something smaller, you know, like a, a car CW 380, which has a two and a half inch barrel, um, yeah, you, it's going to be smaller than any realistic 9mm that's out there, uh, but you're going to give up a lot of performance for something quite so small. And then, you know, the issue I have with something even as small as the LCP2 is finding it. Uh, if I'm going to carry it, uh, you know, trying to pull it out of a holster is, is, is near impossible if you were in a rush. There's not much to grab onto etc. Uh, if you put it in a pocket, you got to find it, etc. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, to me, it borders on too small for, for practical use. And if you get something even smaller, I'm not sure if I, you know, uh, if I could uh, even use something like that. So, you know, as far as the, the size and weight issues, I don't think 380s really hold a lot of water um, uh, for that. But there are a few issues that I do like about the 380 versus um, some of the the other calibers 9mm 40 cal etc um, 
first and foremost is, is the recoil issue. If you're very, um, if you're, if say you're a slight build or you're just recoil sensitive or your hands don't, don't like it. Um, there is a lot less recoil, uh, in general with a, a 380 than there would be with a nine millimeter or, or 40, at least felt recoil in these subcompact size handguns. Uh, if you're carrying a full size, you know, steel or even a polymer, you know, like a Glock 17, or something, you're not going to feel much recoil with a with a with most nine millimeter rounds. But in these smaller guns, they can get kind of snappy, and, and you can kind of feel them. So, so I would say that that would be one benefit for the 380 is the lighter recoil. Um, number two, uh, and, and this is probably a big one. This came about in COVID because of COVID. Um, during COVID times, you know, most of you, if you've if you've done any type of looking for ammo during those you know 18 months or what have you when, when really covid was was really the, the big news um there was shortages there were supply line issues uh you'd go to your sporting goods stores and there's nothing on the shelf um in, in any caliber or if there was it'd be a, you know an obscure caliber not not carried by a lot of people so so uh, having a 380 as an option in addition to another round like a nine millimeter or a 40 caliber or 45 or 38 special or what have you um, gives you more options in times of of potential shortages or supply issues that you know you can just swap out one for another and you're, you're good to go or if you um, stockpiled or what have you uh, you'd be good to go so I think number two would be again um, ha protection against shortages or supply line issues uh, in the marketplace, I think, is, is another option why a 380 is a, is a good option. Um, and the last uh, last reason that I come up with is is uh, a variety. Um, having a variety of carry options in different sizes is not a bad idea because of circumstances, clothing circumstances. Obviously, up here, I'm up in the north here. Uh, and we have, you know, warm summers, uh, borderline maybe hot sometimes. You know, it's 90 degrees today. But most of our summer weather is in low 80s. And, you know, for me, you're talking shorts and t-shirt. Uh, in the wintertime, it can be, you know, zero out. Um, and so having a variety to choose from that fits the weather circumstances and fits the attire that you're wearing uh, is, is, uh, is, is a very big positive you know slipping a, a little 380 in your pocket if you're wearing a pair of shorts is, is simple whereas something with a little bit longer and again even in the winter time you know i've i've already uh carried this in the winter time i've carried the full size um um full size uh, glock 22 in winter time and uh with with no problems you're not going to see it underneath a heavy you know winter coat or what have you if you're doing concealed carry um, I'm, again, I'm not talking in, in states where open carry is legal. This is more for concealed carry purposes. But um, so again, having that variety, I think, is 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 helpful um, and and useful for the circumstances um, that you might run into. So um, some other items I do want to debunk here a little bit is the cost issue. You know, a lot of people, especially novices, are going to think, well, you know, with a 380, it's a small round. It's it's you know, there's less material, etc. It should be cheap. Um, but it's really not. I think, you know, a lot of that has to do with, with government contracts, what is being produced for the government, you know, what companies are, are mass producing nine millimeters more so now than, than pretty much any other handgun cartridge. So, you know, nine millimeters on average on balance are, are cheaper than your 40 cals, your 45s, your 380s, etc. So even, even for self-defense rounds. And, and the other thing with, with, all the government contracts in nine millimeters there's a lot more r and d money being spent in nine millimeter so you have a lot better choice of self defense rounds in nine millimeter um, that have proven effective in 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 testing than you do in three eighties um, People are always looking for for better three eighty rounds um, that perform especially in these really really small um, really small uh, options like the l c p two or 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 even smaller. Um, to get that, you know, those recommended penetration and expansion numbers. Um, so it's really difficult to do that with some of these. So, um, you know, uh, that's kind of my take on, on a 380, why I bought a 380. Um, you know, when did I buy my, my first 380? It was actually during COVID. 
um, I found I found the Glock 42 on a, on a uh, it was a pre-owned one. I found it on a sale, thought it was a good deal, picked it up, and then actually uh, I ran into some issues with uh, ammo. Um, you know, that's the other thing too with, with a lot of these guns that people don't think about is that you should actually be practicing with what you're going to carry. Make sure your gun likes it, cycles it well, you know, that you're you're accurate with it, etc. And and I bought this and then I picked up some uh, lightweight uh, arc inceptor rounds and uh, this would not cycle it. I uh, did not like it whatsoever and I picked up, unfortunately I bought them in bulk on a good sale because I like sales as I said before. And so I was stuck with a couple hundred dollars worth of uh, ammo and uh you know I, I i had a couple of options i'm like i could get rid of it and uh or i could uh pick up something uh else that could carry it or that would use it and uh luckily i, I came upon this uh deal pre-owned at shields uh locally and uh, i picked that up um you know and then that's um just how it worked out for me so um, that's kind of my my take on it. Um, why I that's why I bought a 380. That's kind of why I carry a 380 on occasion. And um, whether or not you should, that's obviously up to you. Uh, I think there's definite pros and cons of 380s. Uh, it is not my favorite round. Uh, my favorite round is actually a, so far has proven to be 40 cal. Um, but uh, when it comes to carrying, I, I generally carry the the nine millimeter um, because it's uh, more comfortable. I found I've found that this uh, LC9S because of its its overall slim uh, personality, uh, it's the most comfortable for me to carry personally. So again, uh, find one that works for you. Um, hope you enjoy this. Um, if you got any comments or you know why other addition reasons why 380 versus something else, I'd like to hear them. Again, I, I, I racked my brain and I couldn't come up with too many more on Y380, uh, but there's probably some other good reasons that I haven't thought of. So uh, go ahead and share those and uh, uh, take care and stay tuned for the next one.